Hi. My name is Jim Hunter, and welcome to this special show. Today, I sit down with musician Cassandra Di Monica to talk about politics. Because, why not? Let's get right to it. So where do you see yourself on the political spectrum? Progressive, for sure. In defiance of some more conservative-leaning family members. I think the conservative mindset is missing the point in a very big way. How so? Well, basically, conservatives want things to stay the way they are. Keep with traditions, keep with existing values. And for people who are settled well and comfortably, of course that works well. They should have little complaints, they should not have monetary concerns, and they should well be able to enjoy their freedoms. But when you are growing up, and you have to establish yourself in the world, and make a living, running into old values often turns out very limiting. You see, wanting to keep things the way they are, means not wanting to accept new influences. Young minds growing up in an old world, they have to make sense of it all, find modes for survival, and simply copying from existing modes with many examples being less than attractive is not going to work. So other ideas come to life. And the conservative mindset does not want other ideas. Not wanting other ideas sounds like xenophobia. Well, it's a fear of change. That is for sure. But guess what? The world is changing. The climate is changing. And it's the old ways of the economy driving those changes. Conservatives do not see a need for more or better regulations. People in control of policies, the lawmakers, are notorious for being well off in terms of income and housing and travel, so of course they do not experience an urgent need for change. But when you are young, you will be running into a lot of socio-economic walls thrown up by the old ways and it's a real struggle to get any traction one way or another. So what do you see as the greatest fallacies of conservative thinking? The unwillingness to put effort in making or keeping life good for everybody. Life is not good for a whole lot of people. To improve the lives of people with low income and low economic prospect, effort needs to be put, and one way or another, that requires investment. And if there is no effort, no investment put into simple things such as upkeep of infrastructure, things will deteriorate and break down. This is of course very obvious. Without maintenance, bridges will eventually fail. The same counts for the environment. If old ways of society puts pressure on the environment, it will require more attention to keep it livable and functioning. And how does one put maintenance to the environment? Ironically, via conservation efforts, is one thing. Try telling that to a hardline conservative, that conservation efforts for the environment are a necessity to keep the world livable and functioning for humankind. But they cry, it all costs so much money, and we don't want to pay more taxes. Let companies take their responsibilities. But really, you cannot count on all individual companies to suddenly all become ecologically conscious businesses, and improve other things like working conditions and wages for instance, if they have no incentive to do so, so it's up to government to put regulations and policies. And guess what, if wages increase, there is going to be more tax revenue, which can be invested to make many more improvements in infrastructure, environmental conservation efforts, and health care and so on. Okay. So, are there any downsides to progressive thinking? As with anything, nothing is perfect. In order to implement changes, a critical mass of people needs to be on board. As often seems the case, progressives seem to be impatient, combative, and in the worst cases caught in victim stance thinking. Change takes time. And every change demands careful consideration and study, to make sure of the best possible results of the changes made. Progressive extremism may actually lead to a form of fascism if people who do not get on board quickly enough, or, at all, fall prey to being harassed and bullied. The humanity factor needs to be included in all policy making. Business and society exists for the good of the people. People existing for the good of business and society is fallacious thinking. Business and society are in itself unfeeling entities that require no sympathy, apart for all the people who populate them. So all things considered, I consider myself a progressive humanist. And I vote for the Animal Rights Party, because the way people treat their animals is a measure of the true compassion a civilization has to its own people. And that can, and has to, 
greatly improve, too. Thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. We hope this inspires you one way or another. If you want to see more of this special show, please consider to subscribe and we will start to put content out regularly. See you later.